All right, everybody. Thank you for jumping on our Tri-State Trends podcast. I got my main man out of Dallas, Texas, Jesse Parley, the boss of FFL Avenues, who's constantly, since he's been here day one, producing at a high level, helping out a lot of families. Jesse, how you doing, my man? Good, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Um, I wanted to get into some of the things that you're doing now, and uh, I've watched your business grow over time. I've watched what you've done and altered you know, to build groups and get things to where they are and to be a consistent producer through it all. When we think about building and selling at the same time and being a consistent producer constantly, you seem to never get daunted. I talk to people all the time. I mean, you're issuing, you're helping 30, 40 families a month every month since you got here. I talk to people all the time that think it's it's a good idea to phase out of the production side. I want to know from your standpoint why that's been your oxygen. Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, you know, you're correct, right? From the beginning, I'm now over four years here, um, which is kind of amazing to, to actually think about saying that out loud. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think, look, I think that what goes, goes into all this for me is my focus is on consistency and consistency across the board. Right. So I always talk to new agents, you know, it's going to take you a little bit to find your groove here, but then once you do every day is wash, rinse, repeat. And I think that that's sort of just the mantra that I live by, right? Like the appointments are going to be different. Your, you know, in-home telesale, whatever is going to be different, but like your process and your interaction with people is going to be the same every time, right? Because you need to keep the same structure. Their answers may be different, but your approach has to be the same. Um, and I think I just, again, I think I just apply that across the board, right? I can't get too low. You know, I still have days where I'll see see people or talk to people on the phone and I don't sell anything. But I can't walk into the next day talking about, damn, like yesterday sucked, right? I got to talk about awesome. Like today is going to be great, right? Because you know, it's just, it's the way it's got to be. Um, you know, I think the other thing for me is just the way that industry has changed from my perspective since COVID, right? There's always been a ton of agents in the game, but now there's a ton of agents, you know, doing virtual. And what I've been focused on for myself that I've been trying to sort of pass down to my team is like you got to stand out and it's not about who's the loudest right it's about who's giving them the right attention so you know i train you know i'm i'm probably 70 30 right now in home to telesale which is certainly more than it was last year and more than it was the year before right but i'm training i'm approaching those both those conversations are happening the same way Right. I'm establishing who I am, why I do what I do, what my process is, what my goal is going to be to do with them. And the rest of the conversation turns into, you know, tell me about you. What are you looking for? Who are you trying to protect? Why? You know, what are your goals? What are your health issues? You know, in a 20 minute appointment, 12 to 15 minutes of it is me getting them to talk. You know, and I think that that goes a long way with people because I'm not just, right, clearly I would like to get paid and I would like to get paid by helping them. But like, if it's all all focused on them, like I'm not not just a diamond dash kind of interaction. And I think that's important right now. They get, you know, on some of the in-homes, they say they've had five to 10 people call them about the same thing. Right. On some of the telesales, you're the fifth agent that's reached out to them. Right. So it's a, it's a got to be real with them and you got to differentiate by being real with them. Yeah. I mean, I love what you're saying. You know, you were a hundred percent in home for as long as I know for you to say 70, 30, um, is definitely a change and a shift for you. Um, even almost shocking to me, but, I want to know what provoked this, the 30% change and 
what w- what's take what's going to take it to fifty percent because it was zero. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I was just talking to to a guy about this this morning, right? And I think that you know some of my stubbornness about making that change has been right. I'm actually producing at a higher level right now with less resources. So patting myself on the back, like hitting hall of fame last year, right. I did not have nearly the lead flow or the appointment flow that I had the year before that. Right. But my, I had to focus on, you know, the shops, the, you know, the appointments that I had, I had to, I had to up my game on, on closing them. Right. So not to repeat myself, but that came from, right. You love the one you're with and you get the one you're with taken care of. So my close ratio was incredibly high. Um, My premium soul level was probably equal or higher. Right. But it was just making the most out of what I had Um, to go and answer your, your question more directly. Like I think what's, what's changed to sort of add that 30% is Number one, um, you know, whether you want to call it skill, whether you want to call it luck, whatever you want to call it, I'd be silly to assume that my, you know, my ratios are going to say, stay that high for the rest of my career. (laughs) Right. And the industry is changing. Right. So I have to, you know, I have to, I have to learn a new skill. Right. Or, or I might as well do something else. Right. Um, so that's been, I guess you'd call that forced upon me, but I'm, you know, I'm open to it and, and I've taken, you know, the steps to, to make sure I'm not phasing myself out. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, with lead flow, I mean, I, in Dallas, like you said, um, there's always been plenty of agents here, you know, FFL, not FFL, you know, but um, with telesales, there's agents coming in you know, here from plenty of other places because of our population. So I've had to learn, you know, branch out. So I'm taking leads from other states too, um, you know, and, and uh, making sure I've got enough resources to make it happen. Makes sense. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting, as you said, the industry's changing. So inside of a change, what do we have to do? Adapt. Adapt or die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So you're adapting. And I think what I heard the main, well, there's two reasons, but the one that I, I kind of latched on to was, you know, having the ability to dial in multiple states, right? Not running everything in DFW. Competition's always been high there, as you said, always, right? But, you know, mm-hmm. having less resources makes you have to adapt. So what did you find in that adaptation? Number one, I think what sort of the first thing that, that I would tell you, right, is, you know, I mean, you know this, but for those people that aren't really aware of my story, like I grew up in Connecticut, I lived in Florida for a bunch of years, I've been in Dallas for 11 years now. And I think that, right, it's easy at different points in your life to kind of get stuck in your own bubble. Right. And I think that moving to new places for me, right, has opened up like there's nothing like living somewhere where you don't know anybody that that explains to you real quickly how big the world is. Mm. Right. And you know, running in DFW for the for the past six years, like, you know, however many agents, however many people like there's still an infinite amount of people to help. Right. Like the world's way bigger than we give it credit for. So I think diving into the telesales, you know, number one, what it opened me up to is just like, you know, there will never be a shortage of clients. Right. It's just how far, you know, literally or figuratively, right. How far am I willing to go to find them? <laughs> um, you know, so that's something I started, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a big proponent of kind of starting something new in your comfort zone. So the first state I, bring, I branched out to for telesales was Connecticut. 
right? I have geographical knowledge of it having grown up there. So, you know, if I'm reaching out to people on the phone and, you know, I'm trying to fill the gaps with small talk and stuff, like, you know, I have, I have range of conversation there. Um, that kind of thing made that easy for me, right? Cause I'm not just like, oh yeah, like, you know, Arkansas, huh? Like, cool. <laughs> like, you know, um, <laughs> you know, um, no, no, no disrespect to Arkansas, right? right? But like, you know, um, so I think that I'm very pragmatic with that. You know, that's a small thing, but that's a small thing that made a new thing way more comfortable for me, mm. right? Um, you know, I think that there's just a I think on the phone, like, you have to just be over communicative with your credibility. Right? Like, I'm very clear, like, you know, and, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, like, my whole career, I'm very clear with people, like, hey, I'm calling in response to what you sent in, right? I'm an independent broker. Like, I don't do any of this. I'm calling from the mortgage protection department or the benefit center. Like right. I don't do any of that because it opens me up for falsehoods. Hmm. Right. And if they're like, Oh, like where's the benefit center? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think our call just, you know, <laughs> like, what'd you say? You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't do any of that. And I, and I think that I guess, my perception of myself is that I hope some of the genuineness that comes from being upfront with them at the beginning about, you know, Hey, you filled this out. This came to me, right? If it's mortgage protection, I'm very clear with them, right? Like your lender doesn't offer type of coverage, right? I don't work for your lender. My goal is a lot inside them, right? I rep, I'm going to present multiple companies. My job is to show you what options for coverage there are. Right. When can we get together if I'm trying to do it in person or do you have time to talk through this now if I'm on the phone? Right. Or if it's final expense, you know, hey, you sent in this request to our office. It's my job to go over your options with you. Right. There's none of this sort of I'm, I'm not, you know, I use a royal they. Right. Hey, they asked me to get back to you about this. Hey, they need me to do this. Hey, they and they're like, you know, if they're like, who's this they? I mean, they could be, you know, the State Department of Insurance. They could be the insurance carrier. They could be the lender, they could be you, Mark, right? You asked me to, you, <laughs> you need me to get back to these people, right? Like, I mean, it could kind of just be anyone. And, you know, from a, from a tactic standpoint, it's vague enough that no one ever questions, right? But it's also, I'm not lying to them or I'm not in the gray area on any of that. And I think that starts, in my opinion, that starts a conversation with them on the right foot and if they're you know if they're interested in the coverage that they've requested to hear about then we get to keep going if they're not all right cool like do me a favor don't respond to any more of these and i won't have to call you again mm -hmm. you know like um you know take it you know have a good day um but i think that there's just keeping it you know keep it 100 with them on a call is you know, for me, that's just been what, what gets it going. Um, you know, with, with either approach in home or telesale, but probably I've honed this more so because of diving in the telesales, like, you know, clearly they all want to know what it costs, right? Pricing is the absolute last thing I get to. Mm. Like it's all the financial inventory questions. It's all, what do they want? What are their health things? All that stuff, right? Followed by, hey, here are the, you know, the options that I think are best fit for you based off what you told me you're trying to do, right? Here's option one, here's option two, right? Does this do what you're looking for this coverage to do? Right? Make them buy in on, on the, you know, the, the product essentially. And then, yeah, okay, so here's the last thing. Uh, here's what option one costs, here's what option two costs, right? Based off your desire to make sure your wife, you know, doesn't have to pay for your funeral, by passing the hat at church, right? Like what's one of these makes the most sense for you, right? That way they've had to buy in on everything, right? Now the only thing that's changed is they know what it costs, 
And if I get any of this, we need to think about it or I'm not sure, right? Hey, Mark, the only thing that's changed in the last five minutes is you now know what the pricing is, right? But you told me this does what you're trying to do and you told me you wanted to make sure, you know, so-and-so doesn't have to survive without you, right? Is that still important? Yeah. Okay, then which one of these fits your budget the best? Right. Are you comfortable spending a hundred bucks? No. Well, then let's cross that one out and never talk about it again. Right. How about this one that costs 50 bucks? Do you think you can afford to give them at least, you know, the basics of some kind of protection? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that one. Right. Simple. Um, you know, for telesales compared to in-home, like, I don't know. I've always felt that I present better in person, right? I have a very monotone voice. You know, you can see me on, on screen here, but like in person, you can see if I'm smiling or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Over the phone, like I've always been concerned that maybe I'll put somebody to sleep, right? And I think that what I found is if I'm able to keep it focused on them for the majority of it, um, it doesn't really matter what I sound like or what I'm doing as long as they're feeling the value. Um, we're going to end up, you know, in one of two places at the end, right? <laughs> Either they're filling it out or they're not, which is kind of the goal of every appointment. <clears throat> Strong, always um, delivering. I think your direct approach helps big time in, in, in regards to you helping families. Um, and, you know, you're doing more with less because your, your skill set continues to grow. And do I think you'll be doing more with less forever? Like you said, probably not. But there's times in your career where the compounding interest on what you've done pays <laughs> and that's what you're dealing with man so thank you for getting on with us you're freaking a wealth of knowledge in this space dope information hashtag and trending with my man jesse parley appreciate you brother yeah my thanks for having me good to see you god bless you my man take Later. care